Yeah, but stand up there talking. Good morning. We're here for our weekly Board of Commissioners meeting. It is Wednesday, June 2nd, 9 a.m. We're here in the uh, Senator hearing room at 555 Court Street. And as always, we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Whew. What a way to start the morning. Good morning, by the way. It's good to see you back with hopefully some rested time. You well well deserved. Uh, you like had two days of vacation. Right? Oh. We're all acting like you were gone Not for a really, month. because I feel like people called me yesterday <laughs> repeatedly. <laughs> you know, uh, Commissioner Willis and I were sharing that yesterday about how um, we were sitting after a meeting and we were just saying how wow. It felt so different to just be able to relax a little bit. We have been going and going and going, and you know we got done with the budgets. By the way, great job on budgets. And uh, yesterday, it just it kind of felt like we were getting back to a little bit of normalcy, maybe. Katrina. Oh, you gotta yeah. look at her. There's we have, we have nobody signed up for public comment. Yes. Oh yes, we do. David's here today. Welcome, David. Good to see you. So we'll go to that, and then we'll hear about normalcy from Katrina. <laughs> Just introduce yourself for the record, as you know. Yeah, my name is David Beam. I'm a spokesman for disability people in Marion County. I'd like to see um, the fair board for Marion County Fair start open it up after this virus get over with. And I like to see this done for families and the disability people and everybody for Marion County would come and have a good time and music too. So I like to see commissioners will look at that for as so soon as possible and we'll get it going. And the board members really want it started. So I urge everybody come and attend the county commissioners meeting and get, get this done for Marion County for the families. Get the, fair, get, get the fair going, is that what you said? Yes, I'd like yeah. to see that done, and I'd like to still be on the fair board, too, for the county, because a lot of people, a lot of disability people attend more meetings and be more involved. Well, your leadership is appreciated in that area, and, and uh, I know we're going to have a fair. Yeah, but I'd, li I'd like to see the board members will uh, urge everybody to attend. And businesses too, for me. As in county. us board members, or the board members from the fair. And the fair board and the county commissioners. All right. Well, well, everybody who's watching today, we're going to urge them to attend the fair. And I know Tamara, she's not down here this morning, but I know Tamara's team's working really mm -hmm. hard. And she wants. She, she told me she wants me still be an advisor to her on that fair stuff. So I, I'm fair. doing my best. Great. Get the county back where it was. And everybody should wear, don't have the shot, they should have wear a mask. Thank you. Thanks, David. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your service. Appreciate it. Thank you. Stay cool out there. I will. Thank All you. Right. <laughs> I have not been. I've been moving the last 12 hours. It's been really hot. All right. So now we get to hear back to normalcy. Um, update Katrina I know we said we're going every other week and this has been like three weeks in a row and I think this is the start of the every other week so uh, what we did talk about was having um, Scott give us a um, wildfire recovery update every other week so we'll alternate back and forth uh, between the health department and COVID and then wildfire recovery um, I don't think we need to sneak ice storms in there no right not at 90 degree days so welcome thank you <laughs> Katrina Rothenberger Public Health Division Director for Marion County Health and Human Services and uh, yes I won't be here next week and it does kick off the every other week cadence which I think um, is great and we're kind of into that um, return to normal that David mentioned so it's very encouraging um, 
Today there were 41 new cases and we've been tracking our seven day average daily case number and it, we are at 38. So we're looking at that every, seven day, every day on a seven day rolling average. And we have seen a 16% decrease from the two week period May 16th through May 29th from the previous two week period May 9th through the 22nd. So we've only had 617 cases in that two week period, which is 176.7 per 100,000. Um, it's super encouraging to see these numbers continue to decline. Our positivity rate for that two week period, the 16th through the 29th was 7.2%. Um, and we're still in the high risk category. Um, the, the state hospital metrics don't necessarily apply to us right now when we're in, because we crossed the threshold below the 200. So, but the hospital metrics have not been met for this uh, period as of yesterday. They have not. They have not been met. Still above 300. Uh, so when they're, they're, it's kind of backwards. So when they say they've been met, it means that they're over the 300 threshold and greater than the 16 or 15%. So we're below 300 hospital cases and below the 15%. Okay. So we're meeting the criteria to open, but okay. It's reverse of what I it's think. It's a little backwards. Okay. Yeah. I think, we should, I think we should clarify this though, because people do get confused and sometimes the language that OHA uses isn't entirely accurate, right? Because they use one metric to push you up a level, and they use a different metric to move you down a level, right? Well, there are two different do, ways we can we move even down. Try? <laughs> well, I'm just, anyway. I just, I, just I wrote, I just wrote down, you know, I have this face mask that says in child abuse. I said, we should have a face mask that say in COVID abuse. <laughs> If we, so we can move down a lower risk level prior to reaching the 65% vaccination benchmark um, if we are below 348 cases in a two week period. So uh, there are two pathways to move down to the lower risk or three if you want to consider the uh, state reaching 70% of vaccination. So um, either way, it seems like we will get there either by the end of June, early July. Uh, in Marion County, we have vaccinated almost 58% of all of our residents, which is 157,674 people with at least one dose. This does include the federal data, so the numbers I shared today don't match what's on the OHA website. Uh, we get a separate spreadsheet emailed to us directly from Oregon Health Authority, but for some reason it's not posted online. Um, it, and we do have about 19,685 more people to reach the 65% benchmark. Um, we did see one of the highest growth rates in the state for our county in new people being vaccinated from the previous seven days. So we had a 2% growth rate for folks over the age of 16. And then the age range 40 to 64 actually had one of the higher growth rates in uh, people getting vaccinated in the previous seven days at about 1.9%. So we need to immunize roughly 700 people per day to reach the 65% goal by June 30th. And that previous seven days, it was, if my math is correct, it was between like 750, 780 people that were immunized per day. So if we keep that up, we'll make it. Yes. Yes, so, and then um, if we do reach the statewide goal of 70% of the population, then um, Governor Brown has said she will lift most of the restrictions that are currently in place and that we're currently at 65.8% of the state that has received at least one dose, which is 2.2 million Oregonians that have received one dose and about 1.8 million are fully vaccinated. Uh, we are seeing the groups of people who have lower immunization rates are ten tending to be the groups of people who have higher case COVID case rates. So what that tells me is that our vaccinations are working and are still the best way to protect ourselves from COVID-19. 
We do expect that Moderna will soon apply for emergency use authorization to immunize folks over the age of 12. And since I did mention that I'll be coming here only every other week now, we are keeping our website up to date with data. So our website is covid-19.mchealthy.net. There is a page for data and reports, and we provide a weekly report about vaccinations and then a biweekly report for that's more in depth on COVID-19 data and trends. So. Um, our vaccination report should hopefully be done today. Uh, the data came in late because of the holiday weekend. So uh, check our website for updated data. We have the vaccination report is only about five pages and it's really in depth. We have vaccinations by age, race, eth ethnicity, and um, zip code. So it's really interesting. Um, and then Lastly, the United States just recorded a seven-day average of fewer than 20,000 new daily COVID-19 cases for the first time since March of 2020, so since the beginning of the pandemic, and um, just a great milestone to celebrate us getting back to normal and uh, getting all these vaccines out to their community is really making an impact, so thank you. Did you mention we submitted our plan? Oh, yes. We did submit our equity plan last week on Thursday. We're also going to post it on our website. Um, and then we're planning to provide, part of their equity plan is to provide updates back to the community on how we're making an impact in those immunization rates. And we're doing that through that vaccination report that is posted to our website. So once that's posted, we'll email it out to our partners and let them know and show the progress that we've made in various uh, uh, group demographic groups. So can the public find that equity plan on OHA's website? Once it is accepted by Oregon Health Authority, they will post it. Uh, they will be reviewing it this weekend, so we anticipate some feedback next, next week. week. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to post it before or after the approval on your on your website? Um, probably not. I think it's already posted. Uh, they haven't necessarily approved it yet, but you all have, and we have. We feel like it's what else very complete. So um, if they have feedback, we can make those edits and repost it. But we just wanted to share it with our partners because they helped us develop it in the first place too. Yeah, so. there's a lot of good input to that. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, we, we uh, took a little extra time because we kind of wanted to get that in two weeks ago and, and uh, took a little extra time, had partners review it and um, they had some good input. So. Yeah. I know that statement Marin made was a really good addition to it, too. So, any questions? No? Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll, we won't get to see you next week. We will miss you, but I know. you probably won't miss us. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you. Katrina. All right. We'll move on to the consent calendar. All right. Will. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the consent count agenda. Uh, in it under finance approve a quick claim deed for the sale of property tax ID number R54965 from Marion County to the grantee. Under Health and Human Services approve amendment number five to the contract for services with Rain Tree Systems Incorporated to add $70,000 for a new not to exceed contract total of $1,414,064.30 for electronic health care information system software licensing and support for behavioral and public health services. Under information technology, approve the purchase order contract with Acro Services Corporation to add $70,000 for a new contract total of $165,920 for contracted services for temporary support staff through June 30, 2021. Under Treasurer's Office, approve an order distributing Oregon State Forestry timber revenue in the amount of $2,865,343.25 as per ORS Chapter 5. I second the motion. Second the motion. Um, only comment I'd make is under the treasurer's office, it should be like two billion dollars or something like that, based on the lawsuit. No. Oh. Yeah. I think that's um, just interest, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's two hundred and twenty thousand dollars a day in interest. I know. Right. Yeah. That's right. Sorry. That's okay. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of the consent agenda. Say aye. 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 Okay. 
First action item uh, under Board of Commissioners consider approving the incoming funds wildfire relief grant agreement with the Oregon Department of Administrative Services. Amount of 426957 for cost associated with Marion County Sheriff's Office Patrol Services Public Works Parks expenses through June 30th, 2021. Scott, welcome. Yep, thank you. Well, that was such a good staff report you gave right there. I'll just kind of tack on just, I think yeah. the, the key Can thing you is. Introduce yourself. Yeah, introduce yeah. yourself. Yes. Scott McClure, long term disaster recovery manager. And I think this is, a, this is a broader, the entire effort that the county's been doing to support what's going on in the wildfire recovery efforts, very aggressive. I think it's a really good example of how the state's been backing us and how the feds have been backing us. It's been a really good team effort on this, and this is a good example. The uh, specific numbers, we actually had uh, $224,645 for Sheriff's Patrol. That's for enhanced services just in the interim period so they can keep track of what's going on up there, provide some stability to the residents. And then $202,312 park expenses, that's some cleanup efforts and also the uh, looking at the parks, doing all the master plans that you saw previously and doing that effort. So they've got a variety of areas that they've been using that money in, but uh, very well used and um, it's very valuable to have those funds. And we'd approve approval of the grant agreement. So uh, Jan, this, this is the money that came in the rebalance bill, correct? That's correct. Okay, great. So this was this was one of the first bills they passed right. to, to help us out, and we're just now uh, receiving that through DAS. Okay, questions for Scott? No. Nope. All right. All right, Mr. Chair, I move to approve the incoming funds wildfire relief grant agreement with the Oregon Department of Administrative Services in the amount of four hundred twenty-six thousand nine hundred fifty-seven dollars for costs associated with the Marion County Sheriff's Office Patrol Services and Public Works Parks expenses through June 30th, 2021. I second the motion. A yeah, motion second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, thanks Scott. And we'll see you next Wednesday for your update report. Thank you. Okay, also this next item is under Board of Commissioners. Consider approval incoming funds grant agreement with the Oregon Department of Administrative Services in the amount of $1,856,695.31 for CARES Act COVID-19 vaccination efforts retroactive to March 1st, 2020 through December 31st of 2021. Ryan, welcome. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, Ryan Matthews, Administrator for Marion County Health and Human Services. I am here seeking approval of a new IGA with the State of Oregon. This is with the Department of Administrative Services. Traditionally, I'm here uh, presenting funding coming through the Oregon Health Authority for the COVID-19 response, but this is money that, this is $1,856,695 that was allocated to Marion County specifically to encourage and support the COVID-19 vaccination process. Uh, one of the deliverables, which is already discussed in Katrina's presentation, was the equity plan. So we have submitted the equity plan, which is one of the requirements related to this contract. Uh, we're, we're anticipating approval next week. Uh, that really outlined uh, what, what we've been doing throughout the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, which is collaborating with our community partners, working to make sure that we can uh, break down barriers for people to access the needed services and supports uh, dur during this pandemic. Um, this, while we don't have a formal budget associated with this 1.8 million yet, uh, the intent of these funds are for marketing, promotional activities, and education and outreach to encourage our community to get vaccinated. Uh, we ideally will be looking to contract a, a portion of these funds out to community-based organizations and community partners, and we're really proud of those partnerships that we've built uh, throughout this process. Uh, the, the intent is also to have culturally responsive, low barrier access to COVID-19 vaccine and really to, you know, as we talk about hitting and achieving that 65%, we want to make sure that we don't leave people behind and assume that that means the work is done. So that's really why these funds are here to get us through the end of the calendar year. As people, once we hit 65%, we move to low risk and we open up the county, there still may be opportunities for people to want to seek out the vaccine that hadn't already. And, and there still may be people that are experiencing barriers or having challenges getting connected to a vaccine that they're interested in. So these funds are gonna help us to be able to make sure we can navigate people to the resources that they need. Uh, it also has the potential to pay for some of our staff that are working in our vaccine operation unit as, as well. Uh, the, the benefit is that these funds actually run through December 31st, 2021, whereas a lot of the Oregon Health Authority funding that we've received expires on June 30th. So this helps pro elongate that, uh, that funding resource. Uh, so I don't know if anybody has any questions about these funds. 
I don't have any questions. Just want to um, make sure that if anybody is watching, that we're, we're, we're supposed to be based on this contract, we get 50% <clears throat> within five days after the execution. We don't get the other, the, the, the other 50% is not guaranteed, mm -hmm. and that is subject to um, the Oregon Health Authority and the governor's office to review um, our equity submission plan and determine whether we're making progress towards that. So yes, absolutely. Just, yeah, it's based that, on perform our performance. Yeah, which, it's, a which little, we, it's a little subjective here. Yes, but but we expect that our performance will be high as it has been yeah. throughout. So we feel confident in that. Mr. Shad, I also, uh, we talked about this in our meeting and I just want to make the point again, that there have been different strategies to promote um, vaccines in our community. And I think some of them are appropriate and some of them aren't. And so, um, we directed uh, our health department not to in, not to use this money to induce people to get vaccines in ways that that are coercive or um, are untoward or in a way that creates ethical quandaries. I mean, this really is a personal choice. Medical decisions are personal choices, and so um, uh, my understanding and expectation is that we're not going to be paying people to get vaccines. That's not going to happen with this money, and uh, I wouldn't support this if that was the case. So. I just want to make sure that's on the record that, that we won't be doing that. I'd, I'd hope that you'd confirm that. Yes, yeah, we'll write that language into our contract that there will not be any. So when we think about promotional activities and marketing, like sometimes that can be, that can lead to incentives which are like direct either cash or gift cards or payments to individuals. That is not something that we would build into our agreement. So any, any pass through funds to our community based organizations or healthcare providers will explicitly note that the funds can't be used for that, but they can be used to hold events and hold things that can bring communities together and then that can open up the, the pathways if people choose to to have access to the vaccine. So so that's what those are the kind of events that we want to support with these funds. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, I just echo what Commissioner Willis said. And also I I have concerns around events and we talked about this. Um, I think incentivizing anybody to get a shot is, is just morally wrong. I, I would really like to see these dollars used through the CBOs to, to provide direct access to people that otherwise haven't received the vaccine. Um, the word event to me makes it seem like we're going to host a party and people are going to come get a vaccine and I really want to shy away from that. If there's individuals in the community that lack transportation or whatnot, rather than, I know there are other communities giving gas cards, I prefer we take our team to them and I'd like the CBOs to take their teams to them. Um, so that way we're not transferring any type of dollar valued item. I understand barriers and I understand capacity, but this is a lot of money. We could put up a pop-up tent with vaccines on just about every third block in Marion County, it feels like, just to get people to walk down the road to get the vaccine. And also, um, I'm really hopeful that in your promotional and marketing materials, you're gonna uh, really emphasize parental consent for students, uh, anybody who's eligible to receive the vaccine to have a parental consent form before they get that. And I'd like that to really be overlaid to the CBOs who are partnering with us because I think it's not just important for parents to be involved in their kids' life, I also think it's a safety matter because more often than not, kids don't know what they can and can't have when it comes to, um, well, drugs. And we don't want anything to happen in the middle of the night and the parent not know what the cause is. So parental consent is a big deal. But I, I do want to say I'm really grateful for the work that your team has been doing. I received a notice that a lot of the elementary schools in Salem-Kaiser were standing up vaccine clinics, um, which is really great. That means that that partnership is moving ahead. That provides access to a lot of those families that were really struggling before. Specifically, the nine that I saw are right in the heart of those zip codes that are really producing um, the virus. So good job. Thank you. Yeah, the, the team is doing a great job for sure. And. Ryan, I mean, I think if if uh, if OHA is you know pushing us to do something that goes against our core values, I think we have to say no, even if we leave money on the table. So agreed. I think. Yeah, yeah and, and the contracts will be able to direct with these funds what we want those funds to be used for in the scope of work of any contract that we enter into. So that yeah. shouldn't be a problem. Okay. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna just say uh, it, when you use the word event, let's say our Marion County Fair is coming up. That's an event. And to have that event and to promote a vaccine clinic at the fair would be an event that would be appropriate if we had using these funds why we're there to set up an area where uh, you know CBOs could be involved to get their people there if, if there's a 
um, you know, sometimes, I don't think we're having it this year, but sometimes a Sunday has special music for a certain population and having a um, vaccine clinic stood up using these types of things. That's what I would think is, when we're talking right. about events, yes. that's where we could use these funds to help um, supplement some I, of these I agree. Things. It's really partnering with right. events that are already happening yeah. where the community is coming together just to make sure it's think, a way to access. I think that's pretty yeah. clear what we're talking about. Yeah. All right. So... If there's no further questions, I think it's mine, Mr. Right? Willis, yeah. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the incoming funds grant agreement with the Oregon Department uh, of Administrative Services in the amount of $1,856,695.31 for CARES Act COVID-19 vaccination efforts retroactive from March 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 2021 with the clarifications that we provided. I second the motion. A yeah, motion and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thanks, Ryan. Great. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay. Sydney, you're up next. Under Health and Human Services, consider approval of contract for services with Bridge Ray Recovery Services, Inc. in the amount of $1,228,438 to provide addiction treatment, recovery, prevention, Problem gambling services to individuals served by the county retroactive to January 1st, 2021 through December of this year. Welcome. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners. I'm Sydney Nestor, and I'm the Behavioral Health Division Director for Marion County Health and Human Services. In here today, asking your consideration of um, a contract with Bridgeway. Um, and this is essentially pass through money that we get from Oregon Health Authority. Um, that we pass through to Bridgeway and it helps fund indigent treatment services. Um, that includes addiction treatment services on an outpatient basis, problem gambling, inpatient and outpatient services, and uh, detox services. So um, the money gets used um, specifically to support individuals who don't have Medicaid, um, Medicare, or other commercial insurance. Um, Bridgeway's been doing this work for many, many years. Sydney, is this money, does some of this money flow, um, is this money that comes from uh, the alcohol tax, um, video lottery flows through yeah, OHA? Yeah, that's a good question. I do not know where the root of the money on the OHA side comes from. Uh, they're fun. If you know, Ryan. Yeah. I'm sure that parts of that are, I don't, right. so, marijuana so, tax. So this, this contract, for example, would be if somebody was a video lottery machine and there's an 800 number there that says, if you have a problem, call this number, they would be referred to uh, that number and then locally um, the, uh, the Bridgeway would be the local service provider for that. That's right, if, that they're, if they're yeah. indigent. And then there they would do an assessment. So the contract requires that they're doing an ASAM assessment then to determine the appropriate level of care, whether that's outpatient services, which could include things like counseling groups, that type of service, or inpatient services. Okay. All right. Questions? No. Okay. Ready? All right. Mr. Chair, I move to approve the contract for services with Bridgeway Recovery Services Incorporated in the amount of one million two hundred twenty eight thousand four hundred thirty eight dollars to provide addiction treatment recovery prevention and problem gambling services to individuals served i lost my place to individuals served by the county retroactive from january 1st 2021 through december 31st 2021. Nice second motion yeah motion second any further discussion hearing none all those in favor signify by saying aye 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 all right that's done I'm going to uh, recess the Board of Commissioners and open a contract review board. Uh, item act action item is Health and Human Services. Consider approval of an order for a class special procurement exemption to provide residential care services to individuals that reside in adult foster homes, residential treatment homes, and residential treatment facilities retroactive to January, January 1, 2021 through December of this year. And... Camber is here with Ryan again. So who's yeah. going to go first? 
Oh, yeah, <laughs> that was a great conversation. Yeah, okay, Ryan Matthews, Administrator for Marion County Health and Human Services. And I'm Camber Schlag, Contracts and Procurement Manager with Marion County. And we are here before you to discuss a class special procurement. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Ryan and have him talk about the program. Sure, so I can speak to the service. So uh, the way our, so we, we recently approved our intergovernmental agreement with Oregon Health Authority that was on the board agenda a couple of weeks ago. And included in that is funding for those individuals that are in adult foster homes, in residential treatment homes, in residential treatment facilities uh, that are basically passed through funding. And so the reason we're here for a special procurement is because what happens is we have individuals that are living in these homes receiving treatment. And uh, rather than sort of thinking about putting that service out to bid, getting a different entity that maybe bids at a lower rate and then asking people to expect to uproot themselves in, in the home that they're living in and where they move to go to you know the lowest bidder sort of a process it isn't something that's really supportive and it isn't really in line with what uh, the Medicaid rules are where people are, can direct their own care. They, they can choose where they want to live, where they want to receive services and in terms of those locations they're often driven by the expertise of the facility, the staffing that people require, whether or not it's you know one-to-one -one staffing, whether it's they can be in a home that's shared with, with maybe one or two staff that have three to four people that they're serving in the home. Uh, and, the, and the rates that are, uh, uh, that are paid for the daily bed rates are determined by the state of Oregon based on, again, the, the facility, the staffing, the type of work that they do. So we are basically a pass-through conduit where we receive the money and, and within the contract it's, it's funding for a bed rate at a facility for an individual person. And so then we need the mechanism to be able to, to pay those individuals and, and to pay those residential treatment facilities and adult foster homes. And so we're seeking approval for a special procurement so that we can just basically direct contract uh, and pass those funds directly through rather than going through a procurement process which may end up in a situation where where either people wouldn't be allowed to continue to, to live where they are currently receiving services, or, you know, I, I don't know exactly how that would work. It would be a, a significant challenge for us through the traditional procurement process. So, so that's sort of the impetus for, for why we're here discussing the special procurement. And I don't, and I think that one thing we've seen during the COVID-19 response, when we started talking about like, how are we gonna vaccinate all of our adult foster homes and residential facilities? We saw that that is a large list. There are many in our community, which is great. It's, it's a great resource to support people in need and it helps us to get people to step down and and step out of sort of institutionalization like the Oregon State Hospital, getting into lower level of care, getting uh, acclimated and, and uh, integrated back into our community. So these are, these are certainly great resources for the people that, that need them and require that service. And we're seeking approval to be able to move forward with a contract process that'll, that'll work for the system that's set up by the state. If that makes sense. So, uh, sure. Yes. I just sure. want to clarify. So the residents get to pick their own homes. Is that right? They, they do. We, we don't. We don't direct people where they should go. I mean, often it's driven by you know somebody's coming. They, they're assessed to have a certain level of need. There's probably limited options on where that could be. But but people do have the right to to choose you know where they live and where they get service. Okay. I just want to make sure that if we're not doing the the normal process, mm -hmm. we're not picking houses for people. That the reason right. we're going around this normal process yeah. is because we want them to be able to choose their own housing. Correct. And if people move, if people transfer, what happens is the funding will follow them. So we would get a contract amendment that would, you know, they would move from Carol's home to a different home and and, uh, and and then we would make the contract change on our end as well. So people do have the ability to move. I don't know that that happens all that frequently because I think people get, you know, it's your home. You, you, you get you, the people you're working with, the people that are supporting you, the people you're living with. Um, you know, I think those are good support systems. So I don't know that it happens that frequently, but it can, and, and that would be driven by their choice. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. You good? Mm -hmm. All right. So, Commissioner Wills, my turn. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve an order for a class special procurement exemption to provide residential care services to individuals that reside in adult foster homes, residential treatment homes, and residential treatment facilities retroactive from January 1st, 2021 through December 31st, 2021. I second it. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, I'm gonna adjourn the contract review board and reconvene the board of commissioners meeting. That completes our work for the day. I will read the calendar. I don't know whose turn it is to read. You want me to do it? I've done it in a while. Yeah. Okay. Is it a short one? Mm, eh, medium. Oh, okay. Medium. Well, then I don't want it. Mr. Chair, uh, this week we have our next meeting is at 10:30 this morning. 
Uh, it is a 2021-2022 budget committee meeting located in the commissioner's boardroom on the fifth floor of this building. It's 555 Court Street Northeast in Salem. At noon today, June 2nd, we have a Woodburn Marion County meeting, and that's a virtual meeting. And then at 4 o'clock this afternoon, we have a FEMA briefing for local officials located in the commissioner's boardroom. That's the fifth floor of this building. Tomorrow, Thursday at 9.30 in the morning, we have a department head elected official meeting uh, located in the commissioner's boardroom on the fifth floor of this building. That's June 3rd. Again, June 3rd, tomorrow at 1 in the afternoon, we have a Health and Human Services Policy Group meeting located in the Commissioner's Boardroom. That's the fifth floor of this building. And then tomorrow, June 3rd at 1.30 in the afternoon, we have a work session regarding the upcoming fire season in Santiam Canyon response, and that's in the Commissioner's Boardroom on the fifth floor of this building. Then on Friday, June 4th at 11 a.m., we have an Association of Oregon County's COVID-19 conference call. That's a virtual meeting. On Monday, June 7th at 9 in the morning, we have a management update located in the commissioner's boardroom. That's on the fifth floor of this building. On Monday, June 7th at 10 in the morning, we have a board of commissioners chief administrative officer meeting with an executive session if needed pursuant to ORS 192.660 to ABDEFHI, which will begin immediately following management update. And that's again located in the commissioner's boardroom on the fifth floor of this building. Then on Monday, June 7th at 1 in the afternoon, we have a Board of Commissioners policy meeting located in the Commissioner's Boardroom on the fifth floor of this building. On Monday, June 7th at 3 in the afternoon, we have a Santiam Canyon Wildfire Relief Fund Board meeting, which is virtual. And then on Tuesday, June 8th at 7.30 in the morning, we have a State and Marion County meeting located at the Covered Bridge Restaurant at 510 North 3rd Avenue in Staten. And then on June 8th, that's Tuesday at 9.30 in the morning, we have a Community Services Check-in meeting in the commissioner's boardroom on the fifth floor of this building. And then on Tuesday, June 8th at 2.30 in the afternoon, we have a Health and Human Services Policy Group meeting located in the commissioner's boardroom on the fifth floor of this building. And then on Wednesday, June 9th at 9 a.m., we have board session located in this room, the center hearing room, and that's the fifth floor of this building, 555 Court Street Northeast in Salem. All right. Is there anything you want to chat about? Just warning the uh, fire alarm may go off. I was warned about that. I so that. Um, I told them we were going to have a short board session, but uh, All right. if it goes off, we'll end. <laughs> um, anything you want to share? We did several ribbon cuttings over the weekend in Detroit. That was fantastic. Commissioner Willis had his first Chester's chicken. I did. And Never had it before. Was that your first boat right? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. No, I'd been on the river before, but I hadn't been on that boat before yet. The pontoon? The pontoon boat. It's pretty fast. Were you the one that broke it? I did not. Okay. No. Had nothing to do with that. <laughs> That's funny. I only do positive things. But I did see a picture of them with a uh, blow-up unicorn that they had rescued from the lake. Uh, That's right. That I was not a part of that rescue, but it looked like an important rescue. Ah. I did see it floating in the lake as we, we raced by it with kids on inner tubes, and I thought, hmm, there's nobody on that. <laughs> So it was great to get boats in the water. Uh, get I got back in my house, you know, after fire, flood, and back in the house. And I was out on the lake on Saturday, and I saw the sheriff. I saw Zahn and, and uh, Garrett Garrett pulling a boat, towing a boat in. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And it kind of looked familiar to me, but I don't know whose boat it was. It was totally my okay, boat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And then, exciting. And then Moa... Right outside the marina, dead battery, had to get rescued. Not by the sheriff, though. You know, there's Somebody kinks. The first weekend, oh, then, yeah, you know, you got to exactly. work through some things. Well, I think it yeah. was a good experience for me because after they towed me in, the next day I was out with my daughters, and there was a stranded ski doer guy towing somebody. It was just out there by the island. He's like waving. My girls were freaking out. I was like, what's happening? You know, because we blast the music, and we were headed out to blow out. And so we pulled around, and they were like, we can wait we won't start. And so, of course, I picked up the phone and called Garrett. You didn't tow him in? No, because I had my girls, Kids. and it's just, I don't think, I don't know how to do that safely, and I would rather have a professional that knows what they're doing rather than tip somebody over in the water. Um, and the guy says, odd that you have the phone number. And I said, no, he's a good friend. <laughs> <laughs> so it worked out. And they did a great job. There were several things. A boat sank this weekend. That's unfortunate. Several that almost did. Several that almost did. This is my advice to people that own a boat. You should check it before you put it in the water. 
<laughs> you should do the full engine check, make sure the plug, everyone was like, oh, is the plug in? So in, in our case even, we put our boat in the water and it started filling the, whatever that little thing is underneath, which I forget, the hole started filling with water and we turned on the bilge pump and the water kept, went out. And when Nathan opened up the motor, the guy that did our winterization did not plug back in two of the main um, hoses and it, they were just literally sucking water right off the lake into the boat. And that happened to several people. So, Pearls of wisdom well, Commissioner Bethel. Yes. Check your boat before you put check in the water. Check your boat. All the hoses should be connected. It was an exciting weekend. Yeah, it was, we enjoyed it's it. really emotional. I know when we did the ribbon cutting in front of Mountain High. Oh, yes. I, it was like, oof, uh, you know, from where we were on September 8th yeah. to, um, I say September 8th because it was, you know, Tuesday when we actually left, but September 7th, September 8th, and cutting that ribbon and then Detroit Lake Lodge. That Driftwood Grill. That Driftwood Grill. And then uh, the next day we did both marinas. Uh -huh. They're both open. and um, Connor's Barbecue. And then Connor's, yeah. Uh, so it was a working day, but a working weekend, uh, at least Friday and Saturday for us. But it was it was really really exciting. And the mayor, you know, we were talking about um, doing doing a ribbon cutting for every home that gets reoccupied, mm -hmm. rebuilt, and reoccupied. I think that would be really cool to just you know cut a ribbon if people Better want. Get more it. Ribbon. <laughs> well, yeah. I got my Christmas ribbon up there. I could go get it for you. Yeah, that, it's needed because the ribbon I took is completely dilated. It's trashed. <laughs> I noticed everybody was taping it together. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. fraying by the end of the weekend. Um, what else? Uh, I learned Community Services has scissors, by the way. Not as Kaiser, good as your scissors? Kaiser Chamber lent us their scissors. And yes, Community Services has large scissors, Tamara mm -hmm. said. So yeah. maybe Commissioner Cameron just needs to keep them in his house for those activities. There you go. Well, they're not that expensive to get. They're not. Right. And actually, Detroit Foundation is purchasing their own. Yeah. So. I've never shopped for large scissors before, so I, it's I a, wouldn't it's know. It's totally an online purchase. <laughs> right. They're less than $100. And they are real. They so, will cut you. <laughs> so I, I moved um, I, I moved apartments yesterday and today, this morning. I'm uh, sure upstairs till midnight last night. I left till 3. On the hottest day of the year, and and Coe's this so this this um, studio. Oh yeah, hottest day so far this year. And the studio I moved into has no air conditioning. Oh jeez. <laughs> right. I mean, they, it's like they, that's they, in fact that when you sign the papers, they have this air conditioning thing on there. It's one of the twenty pages that you sign. Wow. And I just it was like I got up this morning, and and you go from the lake where you wake up in the morning with your windows open, and all you hear is birds to cars, traffic, traffic <laughs> sirens. It's like, okay, here's city living and here's lake living, right? So, so you know where I'm gonna spend more time. Yeah. Yeah. So I got, I got a little bit more to do and, um, um, but it's, you know, I, I, I'm blessed. And I think yesterday was a really great time where we got to be with the Smith, was it Smith's, right? That's right. Uh, that got the, um, the tiny home donated to them back in Gates, and I saw a picture. I think it they is, got it up there. That's right. They took it up at two yeah. thirty, and it's on their lot. And I suspect yeah. they slept in it last night. So there's there's little things happening every day that um, are signs of of growth and uh, coming back. So it's it's pretty cool to see all the the good things happening within you know the the burnt area up there. So yeah, yep. there was great energy in Detroit this weekend really positive the other thing i think was uh, really good that we did last week was this uh that airport update mm -hmm. uh getting the salem airport update and the aurora airport update and those two assets and how they contribute to economic development some really good assets for us um, and jan budget yes, thank you sure. thank you oh. for you and and the whole budget team and how you made that go really well and, and uh, you know the feedback we got on the budget uh, and I was glad that our team was able to you know share what we really do uh, and I got a call yesterday from um, I took that call while we were at that, that in the car um, the Fred Meyer uh, president of Kroger wants to meet with us and the city of Salem uh, and uh, 
uh, they've already, I guess they already met with the governor, and the governor suggested that, that they meet with Marion County. So I think this would be really fun, not fun, but they have, they have a interesting problem shoplifting nobody does anything about it and I think Commissioner Willis I really appreciate what you said about until we're all on the same page of how we're gonna uh, what are the rules that we're gonna have in our community and how we're gonna take care of those rules if some if some other jurisdiction wants to do this and we want to do this we're not gonna get right. we're not gonna get there so I think that would be a really good thing to discuss in in this meeting with them and I'll be but frank I, we I, I would say in general, we've been pretty aligned with the local jurisdictions. It really right. has been the state. That, yeah. And, and right. ODOT has been a fabulous partner on a lot of our projects. The, the North County Safety Corridor, the work up in the canyon, like the stuff that's ODOT specific. But the folks from the governor's office have told them they can't move, in, have the same rules that we have on their, their land uh, near the uh, highway, near I-5, and so they have a different set of rules there. So we want ODOT in that, con when we meet, when we meet Well, and with also the governor's office. Right. Because they're the ones telling ODOT. That's right. That, yeah, so it's right. interesting right. that the governor thinks that, o that Kroger should meet with Marion County. Well, I think, no, they, they want to know about our mental health. I mean, that's the kind of things the we're going to talk about. The $40 million that we're spending a year? Support, yeah, what are we doing, you know, mental health-wise and stuff, and I think that's really important uh, that, we, that we have that meeting. But um, I was watching uh, a special the other night, I don't remember where it was, but I noticed that Walgreens is pulling all their stores, closing all their stores in San Francisco because they're getting shoplifted. That's right, because it's such a burden to be in a business there. They're getting shoplifted to death and nobody will <clears throat> stop it. And you know that's the type of thing that, that Fred Myers is experiencing. And I know Roths is getting it in West Salem and, and Polk County has done some things over there to help. Um, and but uh, others like Rudy's Steakhouse was just com was was robbed to the tune of fifty thousand dollars just a couple of weeks ago. Like everybody's experiencing it. That video that Rudy's put together, yeah. though, you heard Paige. That wasn't. It's not all accurate. The, the, some of those people were prosecuted. Are being. That's prosecuted. right. That's right. Yeah. But still, my point is, is that people are being harmed. Right. Their businesses are being harmed. Um, and here we know that the city of Salem is working on a sit lie ordinance and, and eliminating people from the park, which is going to take months, which great. But what does that do to the businesses and the people that have literally no ability to kind of to, to ask for, for help and accountability? And there is a team of Salem businesses asking for help. Um, they're going to be meeting with some of the members of the Marion County service providers to say, what what can we do because they want to partner they don't believe that the finger pointing is is doing any good and they right. want to be impactful mm -hmm. um but it is a partnership and i agree with commissioner willis it's 100 percent. everybody has to be on the same page yeah right. we have to that's right so that's jan i didn't have a chance to talk to you about that but um that's a i know we were going to have meet with the city of salem anyways on, on some of the stuff but that was an interesting phone call that i got yesterday so all right the alarm didn't go off. It's 10 till. They're probably waiting for us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Anything else? No. Legal counsel, D, you didn't have anything to say today. You guys did it perfectly today. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Would you, Sam, is Sam around? <laughs> <laughs> is Sam around? Because he always told me I would never reach perfection. I think he collectively did today. Okay, collectively. It wasn't me. <laughs> All right, we're adjourned. <laughs>